that ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch, and Kaon and your images, the star of your God, which you made to yourselves. So, what exactly is Moloch? Let's break it down. Some people believe that Moloch was an object, a creature or a mechanical monster of a sort. Some people show this image and claim that it is Moloch. What? It is not. The image is from a 1914 Italian movie called Kabiria. Here's a short clip. This is not Moloch. Don't be deceived. According to the Imperial Encyclopedia and Dictionary, Moloch, Molech, and the Hebrew word Melech means king. My king. Stop it. Stop it. Moloch means king. Now, let's find out who Kayon was. The International Standard Bible Encyclopedia believes that Kaon was probably a statue of the Assyrian Babylonian god of the planet Saturn. However, those historians are wrong. Amos 5.26 was not speaking about the Babylonians. Amos addressed the Egyptian culture of raising tabernacles and idol worshiping that the Israelites refused to let go of. This can be observed in Acts 7.39 where it states that their hearts turn back again into Egypt. What does that mean? It means that the Israelites' desires were not of Yahweh, but of the lifestyle of the Egyptians. And that lifestyle included making and worshiping idols. Here is what Ezekiel 20 verse 7 had to say about that. Then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man, the abomination of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am Yahweh, your God. Defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. Therefore, Kaon was the name of an ancient Egyptian idol. And many pharaohs received their title from that idol. Pharaohs like Terhaka, who lived during the days of King Hezekiah, had that title. According to St. Louis University, Terhaka's throne name was Kayon Efer Temare. As you can see, Kayon was a part of his title. As stated before, Many pharaohs received the title Kaon. However, there's one that meets the criteria of the time and life of Amos and King Uzziah. His name is recorded by most historians as Asarkan. Budge records his name as Wasarkan. The name is two titles combined as one. Let's decipher the names in the hieroglyph. This is from the book of the Kings of Egypt, page 61. This is the symbol for S. This is for R, which gives the name Asar. The Greeks called it Osiris and Sirius. Then we have the symbol for K, the symbol for the English letter Y that was omitted in transliterations and for the letter N, which gives us Kayon. Therefore, his name was Asar Kayon. And the name Kayon is almost identical in symbols and pronunciation to Kayon of the Bible. According to the Strong's transliteration, this is Kayon. Vowels were not written in Hebrew, so let's lose the vowels. And this is Wa. Like the Yah, it is often lost or hidden in transliteration, 
So let's lose the why. This proves that Kaon is Kaon. The name Kaon comes from the Egyptian idol goddess Cathar. I will introduce you to her in a little while. Now, there was another pharaoh with the name Kaon. According to Bekareth, Kaon was a Hyksos ruler of Egypt's 15th dynasty. This is Kaon's name in hieroglyph. And this is his title. According to historians, the title reads, the ruler of foreign lands. However, that is not entirely correct. The title is of Hebrew. These three letters means ruler, lawgiver, and shuat means savior and truth. The title reflects Joseph, the son of Jacob, a savior and a ruler of Egypt in Genesis 45. And God sent me before you to preserve a posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. God has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Therefore, Kaon was an Israelite king and lawgiver in the land of Misraim probably the Kaon that Amos told the Judeans to stop idolizing. So, what was the two main points that you should have learned so far? Number one, Molech means king. And number two, Kaon was an idol and the title of Egyptian rulers. In ancient times, just about every ruler, which is every king, every pharaoh, and every Roman Khazar, worshiped the sun and the stars as if they were godly. And they still worship the stars. When you look up to the sky, and behold the sun, and the moon and the stars, the whole heavenly host, you must not be lured into bowing down to them, or serving them. Like all the pharaohs before them, Asarkan and Terhaka also worshipped the pentagram, the five-pointed star. This is Tahaka's monument at Karnak. And there is his star. The ancient Egyptians also engraved apes on their monuments, worshiping the star pentagram. This is what the star of Moloch looks like. The star represented Cathar. Here is Cathar being worshipped by a monkey. According to the Gods of the Egyptians by E. A. Wallace Budge, 1904, Cathar was the mother of the light, the birth of which was the first act of creation, a cosmic goddess mother of her father and the daughter of her son, the mother of every god and every goddess, and the heaven, earth, and the underworld were under her rule. Jesus, what a mind job. And for over 400 years while living in Egypt, many Israelites bought into that mind job. And 700 years after their exodus, the Israelites continued the Egyptian celebration 
of lifting and marching around images of their wooden gods and dead kings in solar boats. Therefore Yahweh sent Amos and Isaiah in hope of waking up the people. Wake up! Wake up, wake up, wake up! Up you wake, up you wake, up you wake, up you wake! Wake up! But they did not listen and followed evil. Thus Yah allowed the children of Judah to be attacked by the Assyrians. And Judah was besieged and the people taken away to Babylon. These are the war reliefs of the siege of Lachish by Sennacherib, which are on display in the British Museum. This is a relief of Judeans being crucified. It's interesting how the Assyrians illustrated them. They look African. These Judeans resemble the people who were trafficked and enslaved by Europeans. This illustration reminds me of Whitman Mayo, who played Grady on the show Sanford and Son. Oh man, I digressed. Tahaka, Asarkan, and many pharaohs borrowed their title from Cathar. According to the gods of Egypt, Budge 1904, Cathar was brought forth by the goddess Nayat in the form of a black-skinned or blackish-red-skinned child and received as her name, Kaon Mayat Ankh. Therefore, it is safe to say that the pharaohs borrowed the title Kaon from their great black goddess Cathar. Remember, Cathar was considered omnipotent to the ancient Egyptians. They believed that she was the god of gods, the first human being, the origin of darkness, the first light. Cathar can be found in many forms, such as the monkey goddess, the lion head goddess, and the cow goddess. It is most likely Cathar, the cow goddess, that Aaron made in the wilderness during their exodus. They have made them a molten calf, and have worshipped worship, and have sacrificed their unto This is Cathar, also known as Kaon, the golden cow. You are probably wondering why I'm talking about a cow when the image of worship was a star. Most of Cathar's personifications are created with cow horns and between the horns is a star. According to Budge, Cathar was also identified as Subdet. This is Cathar in the form of the star Subdet the star of your God, that is spoken of in Amos 5.26. This is also Cathar in the form of Subdet, the star of your God. Subdet was the star the Egyptians worshipped. It was identified astronomically as the star Sirius, Asar. Thus, Cathar has the title Asar, as well as Kaon from where Pharaoh Arsakan gets his full title. According to Budge, Asar Subdet was called the second sun in heaven, and it was the most important star to the ancient Egyptians. Subdet also was linked to the Pharaoh, as well as his journey into the afterlife. Hence, the Egyptian culture and festival of raising tabernacles to their kings and their deities reflects Amos 5.26 But ye have borne the tabernacle of your Moloch and Kaon your images, the star of your God which you made to yourselves. This is a Jerusalem pottery piece from the 2nd century BCE. It shows the star Subdet, aka the star of Moloch, the star of the king. 
It is etched with the name YRSLM, Jerusalem, between the five points of the star. According to BassLibrary.org, Jerusalem potteries with the pentagram dates back to 8th century BCE. The ancient star of Moloch is a very popular star. Many nations, like the Greeks and the Romans, adored it. And traditionally, many nations embrace it. Stop it, stop it. Mission, to see if you've taken time to listen Then the definition To give sight to a rib that's missing So that we can complete the mission